Hey math enthusiast, I'm here to go over some notes on the basics of trigonometry, which include the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. First thing I would like to mention is that since each of these are ratios, they're going to include two parts. So for example, a ratio could be written like this, one to two. Or a ratio might look like this, like a fraction, one to two. Or it might be written out with the word in the middle. But the point I'm trying to get at is that for these ratios, I'm going to be comparing two different parts in a right triangle. So in order for these basic ratios to apply, we must be dealing with a right triangle. So let's start from the top with the sine function. So here's my right triangle, triangle ABC. And like we did in the previous section for Pythagorean theorem, I can start off and label the sides that I do know. So I know that side AB is going to be the hypotenuse. But I'm not going to call the other two sides legs right now because they're going to have more specific names. So anytime I'm using one of these functions, I'm going to be focusing on a specific angle in the triangle. And it's never going to be the right triangle. So let's take a look at the first ratio they're trying to set up. So it's sine of A. So if I were to write that out, we would say sine of A. So in this case, I'm obviously referring to the sine function, and that A is referring to angle A, as we can see written right here. So in that case, the next thing I want to highlight in my right triangle is angle A. Now, as soon as I know what angle I'm focused on, I can name the two legs in my triangle. So one of the names I'm going to give is to side BC, and that's going to be known as the opposite side. It's the opposite because it is opposite the angle I'm focused on. It is across from angle A. Now the third side is going to be known as the adjacent side. Right. Why the adjacent side? Because it's next to angle A, but it's not the hypotenuse. I've already labeled the hypotenuse. That has to be across from the right angle. So every time we're dealing with a right triangle and I know what angle to focus on, I should start off by labeling my sides. Hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Which brings us back to our sine function. So that ratio compares the leg opposite angle A, which we just said, with side BC, I have it labeled in my picture, and then compare that to the hypotenuse in my right triangle, which is side AB or BA. Now, if you notice in the next column, they have the sine function listed again, but now it's the sine of angle B. So now I'm gonna be focused on this angle at the top. Now, Obviously my right angle is still in the same spot, which means my hypotenuse is still side AB. But now that means that the opposite side is going to be at the bottom of my triangle because that would be opposite or across from angle B. And the adjacent side is now BC because that makes up angle B. It's next to angle B as well as the hypotenuse. So when I go out to fill my ratio, remember on top of my ratio, we're gonna have the side opposite angle B now. Well, the side opposite angle B is AC. And my hypotenuse, which I said did not change, is still gonna be AB. Which brings us to our next ratio, cosine. So I'm still focused on angle A, so this is the cosine of angle A. First part of my ratio is going to be the leg or side adjacent to angle A. Well, we already labeled that up above. That was side AC. And the second part of my ratio, or you might say the denominator, is the hypotenuse. Well, I'm still using the same hypotenuse, which is AB. Now when I jump over to the next column, I'm looking for the cosine of angle B. 
So the top of my ratio, or the first part of my ratio, it's still going to be the side adjacent, but now it's going to be adjacent to angle B. So that was side BC. And my denominator, the second part of my ratio, is still going to be the hypotenuse, which is side AB or BA. Which brings us to our third ratio, tangent. So the tangent of angle A. So in the first column, I'm still focused on angle A. And the first part of my ratio is the side that's opposite angle A. So we labeled that earlier. Opposite angle A is side BC. Now the second part of my ratio is not the hypotenuse in this case, but it's going to be the adjacent. So the leg adjacent to angle A, which is AC. So tangent is the one function that does not involve the hypotenuse. Now, when I move over to the tangent of angle B, I'm starting off with the opposite, so the side opposite angle B, which is AC. And the second part of my ratio is going to be the side adjacent to angle B, which is BC. So now I've completed all of my ratios. So it's going to be your job to remember what function is what ratio. So sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So how are you going to remember all that? You're going to use this phrase up above. So let's take a closer look at that. So some people might pronounce this Sokotoa or some other strange way that I've heard throughout my years of teaching. But the important part is that you know how to spell it. So this is going to tell me what function is set up with what sides in their ratio. So so, the first part, that S stands for sine. So I'm using the sine function, and the sine function is defined as the opposite side. So remember that's opposite whatever angle we're focused on, whether it's angle A or angle B or some other angle, over the hypotenuse. So as soon as you write down so, you know that that is going to be your setup for the sine function. Obviously, it brings me to the next one, ka. That C stands for cosine. The first part of my cosine ratio is the adjacent side. So the side next to my angle, that is not the hypotenuse. And then it is over the hypotenuse. So just like the sine function, both of those are over the hypotenuse. The only difference is one has opposite on top, one has adjacent on top. My third TOA obviously refers to the tangent function. So the first part of my tangent function has the opposite side, so the side opposite the angle I'm focused on, over the adjacent side. So the tangent function is the one function that does not involve the hypotenuse. Now, sometimes I'll see students write this a little differently just to remind them that they are ratios. So instead of writing it out like three words, you might see like S and then maybe O over H for so, sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine would be ka. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then TOA, tangent, would be opposite over adjacent. So just an alternative way to write it so that you know that these are the specific ratios. Which brings us to our first example. So to start off for any of the examples, whether you're just setting up the ratio or you are solving for one of the side lengths, I would just write out your phrase. So, so, ka, toa. So this will remind me what function is set up with what ratio. Now, it looks like these first couple examples, this first column, 
for all of these I'm focused on angle S to start. So the first thing I might do with my triangle is identify my right angle which will help me identify my hypotenuse which appears to be side SR and then identify my other sides. I feel like the next easiest to find is the side opposite. So in this case the side opposite is across from the angle that I'm focused on across from angle S so TA is the opposite side and that means the last side I haven't labeled yet is the adjacent. Okay, so I've labeled all three sides. So now let's figure out what my ratios are going to be. For the first one, I'm focused on the sine function. So I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So first I'm just going to set it up with the names of the sides. So sine starts off with opposite, which is side TR over the hypotenuse, which is side SR. Next, I'm actually going to fill in those lengths. So TR is 60 and SR is 109. Okay, moving on for cosine of S. So remember, cosine is adjacent first and it's also over the hypotenuse. So now my adjacent side is side ST and my hypotenuse is still SR. So ST in this case is 91 and it's still going to be 109, the second part of my ratio. And lastly for tangent, so according to my phrase tangent, that ratio is opposite first over adjacent. So the side opposite is TR and the adjacent, which I just mentioned for the cosine function, was ST. TR, 60. ST, 91. Okay, so I've completed my first three ratios in reference to angle S. So now what I'm going to do is erase how I marked my triangle. I'm going to get rid of the opposite. I'm going to get rid of the adjacent. I'm going to get rid of how I marked my angle. Hypotenuse can stay because that's not going to change depending on what angle I'm focused on. And now in the second column, I'm focused on angle R. So the only thing that's going to happen is the opposite and adjacent are pretty much just going to switch. ST is now my opposite and TR is now my adjacent. So I can start off, I can label my sides. Remember for the sine function, it is opposite over hypotenuse. The side opposite is now ST, and my hypotenuse is still SR, so that's not gonna change throughout. But now my ratio instead of 60 over 109 is 91 over 109. Then for cosine, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now the adjacent is TR, and my hypotenuse still SR. So now this one is going to be 60 over 109. And lastly, for the tangent function, opposite over adjacent. So opposite is ST, and adjacent I just mentioned in the cosine function, TR. So now my tangent of angle R is 91 over 60. So now that I've completed all the ratios for each angle, angle S and angle R, I can see the comparison here. If you notice, sine of R and, sine and cosine of S are the same. Sine of angle S and cosine of R are the same. And remember, that's because the opposite and the adjacent sides switch places. All right, and the same goes for the tangent functions. So when that angle changes, the opposite moves to where the adjacent is, the adjacent moves to where the opposite is. So those two are just reciprocals of one another. Now, you might expect the problem to continue and them to go on and figure out, well, what is the sine of angle T? Or what is the tangent of angle T? Well, the problem is, 
if I get rid of my markings on this picture and I go to focus on angle T, now across from angle T is the opposite side, but that side is also the hypotenuse. So in this case, we end up with kind of a contradiction. Okay, I can't use the right angle because then I either don't have a hypotenuse or I don't have an opposite side. So you're always going to focus on one of the other angles besides the right angle.